Uh, last presenter of this session, hello, uh, is Nicholas Wan Yi Zhang, and he's a graduate student at the MIT Institute for Data Systems and Society. And he's currently working to launch the MIT Privacy Preserving Data Collection and Computation Consortium. He will be presenting central bank digital currencies and the long term advancement of financial stability. Uh, his co author on this paper is Jeremy Nay. Um. Okay, so I'm standing between you and the break, so I'll keep it short. Um, and we can reuse many of the uh, presentations we, we saw today, actually, this afternoon. So, for instance, if you think about uh, Caroline's, like the, the first presentation, she says uh, the existing banking infrastructure uh, scales well, but it's not very um, fault tolerant, whereas cryptocurrencies um, are fault tolerant, but not, that doesn't scale very well. So, why don't why don't we try to merge the two of them? Uh, so people are thinking about it. So central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. So instead of having phys physical cash, what if um, the central bank like takes your physical cash notes and transform it into like digital cash? All right. Um, so the biggest concern for for them to, to um, that they have in mind is because it, it's the financial system is very vulnerable, as we said. Like they're, they're afraid to break anything. So that's why we, that was our original, original motivation for this study. And uh, so financial stability is kind of an overlooked um, domain in the existing li literature. So velocity, monetary policies, money supply is what get people excited. So, to, well, this talk is somehow more, um, less exciting, I guess. But, um, so yeah, so what we, the approach we, we're going to have is how can we frame this Problem. So this new, um, this new phenomenon of introducing a digital cash into existing literature, and um, so if you think about it, let's say the central bank open like a kind of bank where each of you can put money there, and so you receive these digital cash notes. So what people are afraid is that um, because it's there are less risk for a central bank to fail than a commercial bank, you consider it safer to put your money there. So people put more and more of their money at the central bank, whereas like, and not in the existing banks. So is this going to affect like the existing banks like lending? Um, so how is this going to affect the, uh, the economy? And um, if we think about it, so it's kind of taking the existing banking system and taking away from them some of their privileges. So that's why we are framing our, our study into the subsidy removal literature. And in particular, um, there, there are two specific aspects that are very useful for us. So the first one is because there's a safer alternative, the central bank. So it's like, it's as if you're making the existing commercial banks less safe. So right now, you're, like all the cash you're putting at the, um, at the commercial banks, they're insured up to uh, 250 grants. And um, so if we do a SOD experiment, um, and we take out this insurance, that, that somehow illustrates how, oh, like this is, this can illustrate like how, how more vulnerable like the commercial banks will be. And the second one is that, um, so right now you have checking accounts and saving accounts. You, you, you put some money in your checking accounts for your like daily meals or like your rent, but uh, they don't pay anything to you, whereas the bank makes some money on, like, on it. So that's some kind of very, like, very easy uh, profits that the banks are making on top of it that we are also uh, taking away. So that's why we are using the subsidy removal framework and um, using these two, um, like, on these two specific aspects. And um, because the central bank digital currencies, they can be designed in very different um, fashion, but we are fixing one just for uh, the, their illustrative power. So they are not the most realistic, but they are the best illustrative case. So we're taking the most extreme. Um, so everyone can put as much money as they want at the central bank. Um, and like the, so the guarantee on commercial banks, we can, like, we can take all of it away just to illustrate like how, to see how things will be. But like the, the, the lending system remains the same. So it's still the commercial banks who, who, who you, you would go to, who will lend the money for like buying a house or cars or financing your studies. And uh, so yeah, so this, the presentation, um, we, we've gone through the framework. We're going to look at uh, into some historical case to have a good insight. So all these are in the paper. And what is new is the, um, like, well, we have a model now, so for, for predictive power as well. 
and some data. So these are the things we, we are trying out today with you guys and that we might update our paper with. So the history cases, so now that we have a good definition, so we know what we are looking at, so we can just look at before and after. So let's look into the history of countries like pretty similar to uh, like the one that wants to introduce central bank digital currency and see are they like in other industries like similar cases. So guarantee removal, um, these are, so these are some um, papers in the existing literature like talking about oh like what would happen um, and these are some real cases. So for instance, New Zealand back in the 80s, um, they were sub subsidizing a lot their farmers, like kind of like the US until today. So, um, but then the, the government ran into a big deficit, so they were like, oh, we need to cut it down. So they, they cut everything down. And um, fast forward 30 years, um, well, the, uh, the New Zealand agriculture is turning, it's, it's doing pretty well. So if you go to Whole Foods or like Trader Joe's, you wanna buy kiwis like, or fruits, like a lot of them come from New Zealand. And, um, yeah, so in the paper we go into more details, but if you look at it, um, so initially they, like a lot of their companies suffered some losses, but they reorganized and especially like the small, the medium firms really like adopted many uh, innovative behaviors that, that turned like paid out pretty well. So that, that is some like a first insight. And uh, a second one is for instance, uh, closer to the US, the student loan market here. And what was interesting is that be before 2010, every student loan was guaranteed uh, by the government. So m all the banks were in the business and they didn't really look at the profiles. They were just trying to um, issue like the, at, at most student loan possible and then like making money on top of it. But then after the, uh, the guarantee subsidies have been removed, um, so all the biggest banks except Wells Fargo exited the market because they thought it was, it was not, prof like if you need to hire analysts to uh, do extra work to analyze the, the student profiles, then it, it's, it won't be as profitable. But what is interesting is that even though like, this competitive like, market like, landscape changed, like, no, like the, the number of student loan issued has steadily increased. So um, we have a graph like, later in the annex and it's really linear, so no, no effect at all. And even more interesting, so the fact that there are more specialized lenders, so community banks uh, like entering into this market has we can, like we are arguing our paper that has improved somehow like the, uh, the metrics. Um, so for instance, like the number of defaults on their portfolios. So the intuition is that um, you would think that, oh, since it was guaranteed, so people couldn't, like when they defaulted, the government would step in. Uh, after they removed the guarantee, like there should be more um, defaults. So the bank's profit like should, should decrease somehow. But that's not the case um, because well, there are, there, are several, like, there are several arguments we discuss in our paper, which is maybe they're, they're, like, they're, like, they're looking better at the, like the, the student profiles. Um, Nav so Navian, which is Sally May, privatized, um, they got more aggressive and also and perceiving like, like, and pushing people above the edge. So there, there are good things and bad things happening in there. But, um, but this doesn't lead to a big credit crunch that, that was feared by, like, for, for instance, people when, when they say, oh, if we introduce CBDC, is it going to affect the, the lending cycle? And so the, the second type of removal, like the checking account, so, um, like, a first way to illustrate this is, like, if you look at the um, Chinese, like, payment apps, um, so, for instance, I'm paying Sam and I'm um, using my WeChat account, so I take out my money, money from my bank account, I send it to his WeChat, but bef between the moment I, like, he received this cash and put it in his bank, it can be like, they can be like one week, two weeks, or maybe he'll hold it off like there for a month or two. So it's pretty easy for WeChat to take this money on which it's not paying any interest and putting it into some banks or some more risky businesses. So they, will, they were able to make up to 4%, which is kind of a high number. And um, make some, some risk-free benefit on top of it. I mean, risk-free for them, not, not for the customers. And um, so the, the Chinese regulators, since uh, the beginning of last year, they just said um, that we are taking over all these accounts. So don't try to generate any more revenue on it. And you, should, you guys should just focus on, your, on, on making money on top of your payment business, but not on, on top of like this, um, like this deposit business. So it's, it was a really strong move, and 
So people have have looked at um, how you know how 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 these payment business like like Alipay, Tencent, how how they were affected, and um, well, one year from there, like it's they're still doing pretty well. So we we also go back to um, we we're also going back in our paper to the student loan um, business to 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 argue that the same happened there like after 2010, but. Um, yeah, we, uh, I will discuss it if we have more time. But what is really interesting for us today is to now, so we have some insights from historical cases, but how can people try to, um, like, b before they issue the new, like, um, policies, how can they have uh, some predictive, um, like, tools? So that's why we developed this model. And um, so it's, it's, it's kind of similar to um, like the, the, the landing cycle like Katrin um, talked about in, in her first presentation. And so, so what we wanted is that a model that is flexible enough to account for all the um, like different possible implementations of CBDC. And the biggest, like the biggest variable for us there was for instance, how, how, how is this digital cash going to be handled? Who is going to handle this payment system? So, um, the central bank opens accounts, but is the central bank going to um, also build the app for you to send like this digital uh, cash note to, to Sam? Or, or are they going to rely on the existing like banking system to, to do it? So for instance, the Chinese, they, they just, so they created a consortium with like 10 private like banks and, and it's the private banks who are going to build these uh, payment systems. So on, on this extreme, like the private banks like uh, handle all the businesses. So it's the, the, the extreme case one here. So CBDC for them is some, it's kind of like the uh, guaranteed like student loans. So uh, they have a real, like the, everyone has to go through them for, for this like very safe asset and they can just use it to uh, finance like, like more operations. Like for instance, like think about the repo market last year or think about um, like, like banks like before the, uh, the US Fed was created, like, like if they received gold in exchange. And on the other extreme, um, so the central bank is building everything. And so the commercial bank for them is, they don't see any of this, but they know that people are, are like, some people are leaving their systems to go into the CBDC. So maybe they would want to just, you know, like build the reserves. So it's, um, these are the two extreme of the, um, the case we want to cover, we wanted to cover. And the model we are, we're using is actually uh, from the market design literature. So it's cake eating. Um, so imagine, yeah, it's, it's pretty illustrated, like a graphical. So you have N banks, so N um, mice, and uh, each of the bank um, generate uh, loans. So each of the mice creates some kind of cake, which, which represents the, 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 the loan. And because they're all connected to each other, like, like the customer trade, transacts, um, so each of the banks are, will absorb uh, at some speed the, uh, the cakes from the other banks, like the, the debts from the other banks. And because, uh, so f because of fractional reserve, so when, when you're a bank and you generated loans, you really want like all your loans to be repaid. Like if, if some of the loans are not repaid, like, like the, the, the blow you suffer is somehow bigger than, than, what, you, than, than what you generated. So that's why, um, yeah, so each bank start eating the other cake. But if there's one cake that has not been eaten, so everyone else that, that buy, like, bought assets from this bank, they're going to suffer loss like together with this bank. Um, yeah, so this this is the cake eating algorithm. It it was like what what was interesting for us was that it's uh, it's an existing algorithm, uh, pretty well studied, like from a, both an axiomatic and a quantitative approach. So um, the axiomatic part is in, interesting because if you if you want to make change, you're a policymaker and you want to make change in an existing system. You want to have some properties that are guaranteed, uh, the fact that it's robust, the fact that it's fair to all the participants. And the fact that it's quantitative is also interesting because you, you kind of want to know how much you want to change all the parameters in the model. And um, so, so now that we have like a very simple setting, so how, what, what is it illustrating? So the safety concern, like, concern uh, are really like are integrated in the model. So for instance, um, for instance, if there's one bank that is perceived as safer than the other, then everyone would would first go to take his loan, because so and and then it's so that you you have um, auto realizing prophecy because if everyone goes there, it, it makes it even more um, say like it 
it makes it perceived as safer, so everyone goes there, so it's effectively, effectively safer. And on the, on the other hand, if, if one bank starts to, to give like, bad news and everyone is taking money out of it, so, so you have the typical bank run. And then depending on the initial, uh, like, on the initial uh, setting, for instance, in some countries you have like, two big banks. In uh, th like, this country you have like, five big banks. In uh, another one you have one big bank. So like, this, this really affects like, the, like, the, um, like, the game that is going to, uh, to be played out uh, out of this initial setting. And um, so you, you can fit that, uh, like if you're an Irish regulator then you, or uh, Icelandic one, like you, you can just take this model and fit like, oh, how many mice you have and uh, how, what, what's the size of the cake that like, they're issuing. So you can fit them to uh, your, your like, um, jurisdiction. And um, once, you have, like, once you have fitted your, your model to this, like the only two parameters that are changing after you introduce C CBDC, is uh, the endowments, so how much like banks have in reserve. So, if you're if they're handling the the, the payment system, then they receive all the CBDC. So it's like you're giving them a boost, like so they have more reserves. So that that might affect like how they they, they want to um, like they can issue bigger cakes, for instance. And if if you are not uh, giving them control of of this payment system, then like. Um, so their relative, like their relative weight in the economy uh, will shrink. So the, the speed at which they're absorbing like the other loans are, are going to decrease. So that's uh, the omega. So, so these are the two parameters like in the two extreme cases. And um, in real life, it's probably going to be a mix of the two of them. So now that, so now that you have the model, you have a, like a fit to your national economy, you can play around with it and see, oh, like how much should I, like, how, if I want to preserve the stability of the lending, or uh, how much should I tweak with like E and, and Omega so that it doesn't disrupt too much the market? So that's that for us is the um, is the main motivation of developing such a model. And um, yeah, so just to um, just to conclude, uh, I won't go into it, but um, there's a um, there's a Actually, currently there's a real case, like real life uh, example. So it's not even an experiment because people built like an actual business out of it. So um, Beam, uh, which is a company based in uh, the Bay Area, they develop a banking, mo like banking, uh, mobile banking apps, kind of like Marcus, and they, they gamified it so that, for instance, if you're logging every day, you get a reward, which is a coin, uh, that, and when you use the coin, you can boost your interest rate. So that for us was really. Exp Really interesting because it's the first time you had such a big like scale like like w experiment uh, with like interest rates. So first you can measure how people are reacting like like how are they like sensitive to uh, safety or reward, and uh, then but it's less in um, it's less in the scope of our paper. You can also study how people would react based on like interest rate, uh, interest rate change, but like in their daily life and in their daily like saving accounts, checking and saving accounts. So um, if anyone is interested, um, they, they're like Beam is looking for academic partner to explore like all the data sets they have. And um, yeah, so just to conclude, um, we had we had, we are just making sure that introducing like central bank digital cash won't like break up everything. So for that, we use some formal definitions, and uh, based on these definitions, we can look back into history at um, existing like industrial cases. And we also develop a model to try to simulate this. And um, yeah, so we'll try to fit this model with empirical data and, and publish that soon. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, hello. Great, so um, we have a break after this. So we're running a little bit late. We have one question. Let's maybe just keep it to one. Small question. It's are you familiar with the SPDI? The SPDI, the, uh, it's the, uh, the Wyoming SPDI Banking Charter, which allows for or mandates that uh, SPDI banks uh, do not have FDIC and they have to have 100% uh, or more than that collateralization. Um, so no, I, I was not aware of it. But maybe, yeah, we can, we can talk about it like after, yeah. But maybe my co-author, Jeremy, who was at um, the New York Fed, is away, so. 